Today's topic is thermal contact resistance. Myself, P.S. Saugule from Department of Mechanical Engineering, SITC OE, Yadrao. So, thermal contact resistance, while we solving the example, in this, we have made some assumptions. And what are those? The contact between adjacent layer is perfect. Means the, this is the composite wall and having the composite slabs A, B and C and there is a contact between this and the contact between adjacent layer is perfect means there is a no gap between this. At the interface there is a no drop or fall of temperature. The temperature whatever present in between the interface that is the same temperature for the intermediate means uh, for this slab at this location whatever the temperature T1 is there that will be the same for phase B at this location. So that means at the interface there is a no drop or fall of temperature and at the contact temperature is continuous that ultimately means there is no drop or fall of temperature. So these are the some assumptions we made while solving the example related to composite slab. But in real life, in real life there is some gap between the two plates. Let us say if I say here lateral plate, this lateral plate having some gap over here or while connecting with the help of glues there may be air trapped in between the surfaces. So due to the surface roughness also there is a less area of contact. Due to the surface roughness contact is not perfect and that ultimately results in an area of contact. The total area of contact which is less as compared with the what we have assumed and in because of this the void may be present and in that void the air is trapped and as you know air is having less thermal conductivity as compared with the metal and because of this you may get the resistance to the heat flow at the point of interface and this is nothing but the thermal contact resistance because of this reason you observe some drop or fall of temperature at the interface and this is what we call thermal contact resistance let's explain this with the help of one example a wall of furnace is made up of inside layer of silica brick 120 mm thick covered with a layer of magnetite brick 240 mm thick. The temperature at the in inside surface of silica and outside surface of brick are 725 degree Celsius and 110 degree Celsius respectively. The contact thermal resistance between two walls at the interface is 0 0.0035 degree Celsius per watt per unit area. If the thermal conductivity of silica and brick are 1.7 watt per meter degree Celsius and 5.8 watt per meter degree Celsius respectively, calculate a rate of heat loss per unit area of wall and the temperature drop at interface. Now if I want to convert this, it will be look like this. So graphically 725 degree Celsius at left hand side and on the right hand side 110 degree Celsius with the conductivities and now since there is a temperature drop I have to show the temperature drop on the interface only. So this will be the T2 and this will be the T3. While calculating the heat transfer from this slab S, silica slab 
at that time we need to consider 725 degree celsius and t2 and while calculating heat transfer from wall or brick wall at that time i have to consider t3 and 110 degree celsius so let's calculate so see here because of i am getting these two temperatures at this junction i have to consider this as a resistance what we called it as yes it is thermal resistance now here they have mentioned length that is the thickness thermal conductivity is now contact thermal resistance which they have given point not not 35 degree celsius per watt here it is now as you know we called it as contact thermal resistance which is rth contact and these are the two resistances so if i want to find the total resistance i have to add it together rth this one silica this one and this one so for that i have to take the temperatures so t1 and t2 t3 are is the temperature drop at interface t4 is 110 degree celsius so i have to use this formula since i don't know the temperature of t2 and t3 i am unable to find out this rth so that's why better way i will go for this one so according to this i need to consider a total slab and through this slab the heat transfer per unit area which is equal to the temperature difference divided by summation of total resistances now you know the value of l1 k1 by this means you will get the thermal resistance for silica and by l2 and l uh, k2 you will get the magnetite uh, brick resistance so calculate this one it will come it as 5324.67 now it's your turn tell me the unit of this one yes it is watt per meter square because we have calculated q upon a the area initially at the right side we have taken it to left side so rate of heat transfer heat loss per unit area of wall temperature yes we are having this value now we will take at this side because these are the findings now if i say t1 minus t2 for the first wall if i consider heat loss it should be t1 minus t2 divided by l1 upon k so i know the value of q upon a which is 5324.67 i don't know the value of t2 but i know the value of t1 l1 and k1 let's find out here it is the t2 so by this means you will get the value of t2 similarly we can find the value of t3 by using this slab yes it is t3 minus t4 divided by l2 upon k2 we know the value of q upon a similar calculations was there this will be the temperature t3 now don't stop over here it is required to find the temperature drop at interface right and we only find a, we, uh, we only find out this t2 and t3 to find the temperature drop we need to calculate t2 minus t3 this will be the finding if you find up to this one you will get two or three marks less so t2 minus t3 is equal to put the values you will get 18.81 degree celsius and this is the correct answer drop at interface take one more example find the heat flow rate through the composite wall as shown so here it is the composite wall 
Assume one dimensional heat flow Ka, Kb, Kca and Kd they have given. Now what we need to find out? We need to find out the heat flow rate. So if I convert this diagram into a 2D diagram we can show it in by this method. So let's take the uh, temperatures T1, T2, T3 and T4. Now as you know how to find the uh, electrical analogy for this? Simply draw the resistances in each and every block and compile this. And now see here, I have mentioned here T2, T1, T2, T3, T4 in this way. Now if I want to know the thermal resistance for slab A, I can find this by this formula LA upon KA into area. So should I consider this area or this one? Yes it is. We need to take the green one. Why? Because this area is perpendicular to the direction of heat. Right? So you have to consider this area, this green area don't consider this one so how to calculate this area here it is the 10 centimeter multiplied by see here 7 plus 3 the total height will be again 10 so 10 multiplied by 10 so <coughs> it will commit as 100 centimeter square convert it into meter the thermal conductivity Ka given and length. Now while calculating this length, you have to consider this one. This will be the thickness. And for calculation of area, you need to consider this area. So similarly, find out the thermal resistances of B, C and D by this way. LB upon KB into AB. See here. How I have calculated this area? The area of B. Now for B, this length should be the 10 centimeter. And this height should be of 3 centimeter. So 10 multiplied by 3, 30 centimeter square. Now convert it into meter square. This 30 belongs to the KB and LB which is the this length, thickness of this slab, 8 cm. If I convert this into meter, it will be 0 0.08. So similarly find the thermal resistance for C and thermal resistance for D. Right. Now. We are having this one formula. Q is equal to T1 minus T4 divided by RTH. Since we know the value of both the ends, means T1 and T4, we need to sum up this resistances. And don't go for directly sum up this. See here. And that's why it is important to draw electrical equivalent circuit. Since this these are the two resistances which are in yes it is parallel so for parallel we need to find out the equivalent resistance so let's find out this is our standard formula 1 upon thermal resistance equivalent is equal to 1 upon rth b plus 1 upon rth c by taking these values you will get this one and find the thermal resistance since 1 upon RTH equivalent it is equal to 6.805 now I need to find out RTH equivalent don't take this value remember we need to find out RTH equivalent so 1 upon whatever the value which we have calculated over here so it is equal to 0.147 now, at the denominator, what are the number of terms we have to take? 
थ्री टर्म्स यस इट इज आर टी एच ए प्लस इक्वेलेंट थर्मल रेजिस्टेंस प्लस डी राइट सो दी टोटल टोटल थर्मल रेजिस्टेंस आई नीड टू कैलकुलेट विद दिस वन सो इट शुड बी पॉइंट टू सिक्स सेवन नाउ आई टू यूज दिस फॉर्म्यूला फोर हंड्रेड टी वन माइनस टी फोर सिक्सटी डिवाइडेड बाय पॉइंट टू सिक्स सेवन सो इट विल कमिट एज वन टू सेवन थ्री पॉइंट फोर जीरो नाउ it's your turn tell me the unit of this one in the previous example it was q upon a so the unit will be watt per meter square and now in this example it is simply q so the unit will be watt thank you thank you very much